is a 2006 Corvette convertible, otherwise known as the C6 Corvette. And today I'm going to take you on a tour of this car, show you all the features, the performance figures, and show you why I believe this is the best performance car under 25 grand. First, a little backstory on the C6 Corvette. Now the name C6 comes because this is the sixth generation of Corvette. This is the generation before the radically redesigned C7 Corvette Generation 7 that we have today. Also, the last Corvette with circular taillights before GM went to the controversial kind of square, rectangular-ish taillights on the C7. Now, some people say that this is a better looking Corvette than the C7 we have today, and I disagree because every Corvette's good looking. Duh. Now we start on the front end of the C6 Corvette. The C6 is much more rounded and has a much more flowing design than the C7 Corvette we have today. The C7 has something like nine front angles on the front bumper and hood alone. C6 doesn't have that. Very rounded, very flowing design. It's very pretty. Dear God, it's beautiful. The one complaint I do have about the front end of this car is there's no place to put a front license plate mount. Now, here in New Hampshire, you're supposed to have a front license plate. A lot of sports cars don't, but you're supposed to have one. And on this, it's kind of a pain in the ass to put one on. It costs something like $200 online. It's very ugly. It's not from GM. And the front design is just not, they never designed it to have a front license plate. So it kind of sucks when you have to put one on when you do get in trouble. But for now, this one doesn't have one. This is the way it's supposed to look. Now we move to the big, bold back end of this car. Not much to say about it. It's as wide as an F-150 pickup truck. It has the classic four circle taillights. You do have the four massive exhaust tips in the middle. It does look like that from the factory, but these tips are actually Corsa. This has a Corsa exhaust system. Right, so rear trunk space in the C6 Corvette is surprisingly good as compared to other sports cars this niche where you can put about a shoe in the trunk. This one, you can fit everything a Corvette owner would need to put in his trunk. Now we move into the interior of the C6 Corvette. Now, this is the most controversial, the worst thing everyone says about the Generation 6 Corvette. Now I disagree with that for two reasons. Have Corvettes ever, ever had a really good quality interior? No, they haven't. And two, if you're buying a Corvette, if you're buying this generation Corvette, a C6 convertible, most likely you're having your midlife crisis, you're 50 years old, and you're buying something for pure fun. No one gets into this car and says, wow, this interior is crap. No, because that's not what you're buying this car for. You don't buy a Corvette for its interior. You buy it for what's under the hood. And in this case, it's a six liter V8 with 400 horsepower, rear wheel drive, and a six speed manual. When you're driving this car, the last thing you're worried about, oh, this interior plastic is crap. Oh, this dashboard is so shiny. It's really not. It's not a bad place to be. It's actually a great place to be. A complaint I do have, the seats could hold you in better. They could be a little bit more firm and they could hold you better than that of a Cadillac. But that's really it. A simple steering wheel with no buttons so you can focus on driving a proper manual gearbox with a third pedal and a handbrake that you can actually pull up and down without having to press a stupid button. The gauges, it tells you everything you need to know, and the stereo, it does its job. You pick which station you want to listen to, you have six favorites, and you can put in a CD if you're in the year 2006. Maybe more car companies that do make performance driver-oriented cars such as this should go back to a time like this where what you had was what you needed. Not throwing in bells and whistles just for the sake of design or to say that you have them. This is a simple, proper driving experience. One thing you will notice when you're getting into the car is you do have a, over half a foot of just body you have to step over in order to get in the car. They do that so that the passengers and all the weight is more towards the center for better weight distribution and better handling. So now that I'm done my rant on what other people think of the C6 interior, I'll, I'll give you my opinions on the C6 interior. So starting with the steering wheel, as I said, it's simple. There's no buttons on it, even though it would be nice to maybe have a volume adjustment or maybe some radio adjustments on there. I like that it's simple. I would rather have less 
than too much. The gauges, they're very sporty, they're very clean, and they're extremely easy to read. You have the nice big speedometer in front of you so you can tell just how much over the speed limit you're going, along with all your adjustments to the center screen. Shows your odometer, your trip mileage, oil pressure, stuff like that. All right, so moving over to the center control stack here, you have a radio, and the one thing I dislike about this radio is there's no, there's no way of telling which of the knobs changes the volume and which of the knobs changes the station. It does take a little bit of trial and error figuring out which button does which. You do have dual zone climate control in this car, and there's not much else to say about the heater controls. It's extremely straightforward. There's no confusing buttons. Everything is clearly labeled as to what it does. You do have two of the world's smallest cup holders that you can slide a cover over. Moving down to the center console here, you do have the button that turns off traction control. If you hit it once, it puts the car into competition driving mode, which gives you a little bit of slip. It makes you feel all high and mighty without throwing you into the woods. Hit it again, it shows that you have traction and stability control on. Hit it one more time, it turns everything off. I like how simple it is. You press it, you know what the car's doing. There's no confusion, it's straightforward, and that's what I love about this car. And the thing I like most about that button, it does show the back end of an actual Corvette on there. You can see the four circle taillights. You can clearly see that it's a Corvette. And the same little graphic comes up on your gauge. Now the center console, like many Corvettes, isn't very big. Uh, you can fit a newspaper, maybe if you still read those, or eight receipts, but that's about it. You do have a power outlet in there, as well as one up there. And probably my favorite thing about this interior overall is this. I've never seen another car that does this. It takes the exterior and molds it into the interior. You have this beautiful tan and black interior, and then it's just pierced by this, this big painted maroon panel. And of course, finished with the Corvette emblem. Moving over to the glove box here. It's relatively small. I would say you could fit one pair of gloves in there. Now, as I said under the hood, you get the six liter LS2 V8, which makes 400 horsepower and 400 foot pounds of torque. So now, it's time to take this Corvette for a drive. Simple key embezzled with the Corvette emblem on it. Press the push and start button. Or is alive. Now you will have noticed I'm not in a different car. I had to put the roof up. Even though some of you don't like listening to me, listening by annoying voice, some of you do. If I kept the roof off, you wouldn't have been able to hear me. Lucky for you, but unlucky for the people who actually want to hear what I have to say about this vehicle. And I have a lot to say. First thing you notice in the Corvette is the driving position. Now, I will say this. If you are a taller person, not to brag, but I am 6'5", you will notice the gauges sit a little bit lower than some of us like. In the comparable new generation Camaro, the door sills come up a little bit higher, the gauges come up a little bit higher, and in that regard you feel like you're sitting lower into the car. I'm a big fan of that. I love when you sit low, really low in a car. The Camaro definitely gives you a better perspective in that matter if you're a taller person. Now as for legroom, all of that, this is a clutched manual transmission, and I have plenty of room. I have plenty of room for my feet. It's comfortable, it is spacious in here. But that's the one little note I have. If you are taller, you will notice it's a little bit different. If you're of, say, normal height, you'll have no problem ever, and disregard the last two minutes of me talking. Next, you'll notice the ride quality. Now, I'm on a road that's about as pimply as a teenager's face, and you can feel it. And that's not a bad thing though, because this is a Corvette, it has stiff suspension. This comes from the era where there's no adjustable suspension on this car. I believe on the new Corvettes you can adjust the dampers, you can adjust the steering feel. On this one, the way Chevy set it up is the way you get it. 
Now this Corvette isn't equipped with the optional magnetic ride control. I've heard fantastic things about that, but this car just isn't equipped with it. But there's nothing very uncomfortable about this ride, but also having to do with the ride is the handling, and this thing handles fantastic. It is one of the smoothest corner-taking cars I've ever driven, to be honest. I just passed a cop in a maroon Corvette. I don't think this is gonna end well. I think we might be all set, though. Woo. Anyways, back to the handling. The coolest thing I noticed about the handling of this car is that when you go to accelerate and when the car does step out on you, if you have, you know, competition driving mode, or traction control disabled is even when it steps out it's not this big fit where there's wheel hop it's just the car is so smooth and so controlled it just like glides along when you take a corner hard it's completely level there's virtually no body roll at all now as corvettes have always been this is fiberglass so that does help with the handling seeing as though this weighs just a hair over 3,000 pounds and that beautiful tone you hear in the background is that 6 liter LS2 V8 engine. Now the LS engine is absolutely magical. People seem to put this in everything now just, as good, just because it's so good. It's just, it's hard to beat it. This one makes 400 horsepower and 400 foot-pounds of torque. And that is 50 more horsepower than the previous generation Corvette. And 40 more foot-pounds of torque. You can feel it. exhaust. Woo! If you have anything with an LS engine, you have to put this exhaust in. And I will put a link to it down in the description below. Definitely check it out because it sounds phenomenal. Now, weighing just over 3,000 pounds, having 400 horsepower and 400 foot-pounds of torque, that means this car will do 0 to 60 in just over 4 seconds. Now that's faster than both the Aston Martin Vantage and Vanquish of this era. It's faster than the Porsche 911 and Cayman S, and it's even faster than a Lamborghini Gallardo Spider. It's a big dragon point if I do say so myself. This car does have a proper stick shift, six-speed manual transmission with a clutch like it's supposed to. It shifts smooth and it'll shift as quickly as you can make it shift. And I am in no way a professional driver, so that's not very quick. V6 Corvette, as well as the C5, the previous generation Corvettes, have what's called a transaxle. So that means the transmission in this is actually at the back. Now that's a very foreign thing. You see that on cars such as the Porsche 928. When you do that, you achieve almost perfect weight distribution, perfect balance in the car. And the C5 Corvette was known to have a perfect, or almost perfect 50-50 weight distribution between the front and the back. This thing sounds good. <laughs> now, as I said at the beginning of the video, I believe this is the best performance car for under 25 grand. So I thought maybe we'd take a look at some of the cars available in that price range that are even close to the performance figures of this. So as I said, zero to 60 in this car is just over four seconds in a convertible configuration. Your next quickest car for about 25 grand is a V6 Mustang, and that'll do zero to 60 in about five and a half seconds. After that, you have the new Miata that does it in about 5.9 seconds, and then you have the GTI that's also around 5.9 seconds. So you're talking almost a whole two seconds difference around this price point. And some people argue, oh, well, those are daily drivers. You could daily drive this. There's not one thing driving this that would make you think, oh, you know, I couldn't drive this every day. It's perfectly comfortable. You have plenty of room. You have nice air conditioning. The ride is comfortable. And you even have a lot of space in the back. Granted, you do only have one seat. So if you only have one friend, then it's perfect. If you have more friends, you can tell them to shove it or they can get in the trunk. 
what I think I like most about this car is the market of people who buy it. Corvettes, even when they're brand new, aren't overly expensive for what you get. They have always been known for some of the best value for performance cars in the world, really. Now, the people who are buying these Corvettes are usually hard-working, blue-collar Americans. These are people who bust their ass Monday to Friday to be able to go home and take something like this for a drive. They don't care about the interior. They don't necessarily care about the ride quality. It's the noise. It's the feeling in the seat of your pants when you're revving up a 400 horsepower V that sounds as good as this. <laughs> so much about this car. It's because of who it represents and the demographic that it really touches. I just wish I could have as much fun in it as I could be, but instead I'm following someone who thinks it's all right to do 30 miles an hour in a 45. It's okay. Just breathe. So I want to thank you all very much for watching. I hope you had as much fun watching it as I did filming it because I had lots of fun. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It really helps me out. Or give it a thumbs down if you really hate me or you hate Corvettes. Comment down below what you think. If you like the C6 Corvette, if you're more of a fan of the Generation 5 Corvette, or if you like the new C7 Stingray Z06 Grand Sport or ZR1. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you guys in the next video. Happy motoring.